You are looking at Space Station in Kerbal Space Program 1. Now you are looking at Space Station in Kerbal Space Program 2. Do you know surface colony in KSP-1? The black hole in KSP-1? Huge interstellar spacecrafts? Well, I think you get the point. With Kerbal Space Program 2, we got barely working tech demo. With current quality and rate of KSP-2 development, we will reach KSP-1 level of quality and gameplay saturation by the year 2030. In this video, I want to fulfill KSP-2 promise with KSP-1 mods. Right here, right now. The biggest challenge with KSP-1 mods is the sheer amount of information. To put it bluntly, it is hard to understand and implement. Not everything is compatible and crafting balanced experience can be hard. I will explain every single mod, why you need it and what it does. This video is aimed at players that never got into major customization or even completely new to KSP-1 mods. And even if you are a veteran KSP enthusiast, maybe this pack can provide a different way to play the game once again. Mods in this video are separated into several logical parts. First we will start with essentials to streamline KSP mod installation, next we will upgrade our graphics with numerous visual upgrades, then we will upgrade gameplay experience with the best gameplay and quality of life modifications, and in the fourth chapter we will fulfill colony gameplay with the new parts. We will add simple life support, revamp heat system and nuclear reactors. In the chapter 5 we will add heavy launch vehicles with 4 new fuels and 4 new engine types. This will streamline construction of both colonies and huge interstellar spacecrafts. The chapter 6 is all about interstellar great engines and technologies with several new gameplay loops. And final chapter is all about exploring planet packs with new interstellar drives. As you can notice, this list have the sequential order, and to some extent every part is an incremental upgrade, so you can stop at any step that suits your taste. So without further ado, let's go for the first chapter. Amount of time you need to install every single mod in this video can take up literal hours. I was able to do complete install under 15 minutes. And while I have good ISP and prior knowledge, the true time saver is SCAN. This utility is essential for the fast, safe and up-to-date mod installation. All the necessary links are in the pinned comment under this video. Just download SCAN executable, place it in any convenient place and designate fresh install of KSP1. I am using the latest version of KSP1, which is 1.12.5. Now, with SCAN installed, we need to install essential modding libraries. These are modules that many other mods require to function. Scan can automatically install mod dependencies. Nevertheless, manually installing these essentials makes your KSP build more flexible. Type in scan search window, following mod names and place the check mark. Module Manager. This module loads mods into the game. B9 Part Switch. Allow for the fuel and resource switches for majority of modded fuel tanks and part expansions. With scan, you can install older versions of mods when it's not available for the latest version of the game. To do this, Press version tab and then select the latest version of the mod. Community resource pack, community category kit, KSP community fixes. These are three major dependencies that fix hundreds of issues and bugs while adding major quality of life into the game. Community tech tree and hide empty tech tree nodes. This will allow to have proper progression for the modded parts while obscuring unnecessary empty science nodes. Community part titles and community part titles extras categories. This is one of the best quality of life upgrades. These two mods groups up numerous mods into their respective categories and regroups vanilla parts. Now, with all these modules checked, you can press apply changes. During the mod installation, Scan will recommend to install extra mods. Don't do this. We want light paint and clean install with minimal feature creep. Congrats, you have installed the first bunch of mods. Alright, now let's transition into the interesting part – visual modifications. When combined together, next six visual mods provide cornerstone for the good-looking game. Environmental Visual Modification Redux, or simply EVE. This visual mod adds clouds and city lights to the base game. Side note, we are not installing stock config for EVE. Scatterer. This mod adds atmospheric scattering, ocean shaders, better sun flare, god rays and even eclipse shadows. We are not installing Scatterer Sunflare or default Scatterer Config. These modules would be provided by other modifications. Third essential visual mod is Waterfall Core and Stock Waterfall Effects. This mod replaces Slug Cluster Vanilla Engine Plumes and Sounds with very good stuff. Not quite the level of KSP2, 
but it's a leaks ahead from KSP1 Vanilla. Next mod is Planet Shine. Planet Shine will lead your spacecraft with ambient light from the planets down below. Next one is Spectra, the main visual pack. Spectra have numerous add-ons to improve on EVE clouds and scatterer. We'll utilize all the available add-ons, including Spectra scatterer configs, EVE configs, and 64k Kerbin clouds. Major bulk of Spectra work is to implement atmospheric effects like auroras, bioluminescent glow on lathe, and even dust storms on Duna. And finally, we have the final piece of our visual puzzle. Parallax. Parallax is the most advanced visual mode out there, but it focuses only on the ground. It adds tessellation, advanced textures, grass, trees and object scattering. So if you are a rover fan and like to drive around planets, Parallax is just must-have modification. Note, Parallax collision feature is need to be activated manually. For this, you need to go for the game data folder, Parallax folder, config, then open parallaxglobal.cfg with the text editor, then change enable collisions to true. Alright, we have installed our essential visual mods. Now we can add extra flair to push our visuals even further. Shabby, Shady and Textures Unlimited – very powerful framework for multiple mods down the line. In simple terms, these three mods add translucent effects to solar panels, parachutes and allow to replace vanilla textures. Simple Repaint – KSP2 is nice for its color customization, but with Simple Repaint we already can do this in KSP1. Here is an example of custom painted space station, definitely adds the layer of personalization. Restock. This will upgrade vanilla textures of every single part and facelift them to keep up with the bunch of parts added with the mods later in this video. I do not use Restock Plus. Later part packs will add more than enough of missing parts. Remember that every single mod eats your system resources and increase the loading times. TUFX. It is rather optional visual upgrade. Basically, this is like extra post-processing for the game. There are dozens of presets for TU effects, and you can make your game look like vintage documentary, or maybe like something like... Uh, there are a lot of likes in this video, come on, press like if you like the video. <laughs> Cringe. Alright, so you can actually make like oversaturated JJ Abrams Sunflare Hellscape. Alright, so... TUFX is nice to take screenshots, but I usually stick to default config on the longer play sessions. And the good question here is how much of a supercomputer you need to run all these graphical mods. I have pretty modest 2 year old system with Ryzen 5 600X, 2080Ti, 48 gigs of mid-range RAM at 360MHz, and first generation M2 drives for the gaming and system install. Not a top hardware by a mile. RAM is there for Fusion 4K editing and it would be only handy if you would install every single planet pack in existence. And I'm running everything in 4K while recording in 4K and using secondary monitor at the same time. Most of the time I get 60 plus FPS and can experience FPS stutters only when I use a lot of lights. Otherwise, I am pushing this system well beyond simple gameplay with KSP1. Meanwhile, I just barely get 15 or 20 FPS in KSP2 at 1080 resolution. Yeah. Alright, now let's start to add new features, quality of life and quirky careful stuff. First stop is MacJab 2. While some consider it as a KSP cheat autopilot, the true power of MacJab 2 lies in extra readouts and controls. From basic vessel information, complete Delta V readouts, to maneuver node planner, alternative SAS and even RCS balancer. Next one is docking port alignment indicator. One of my all-time favorite mods. Pretty clear and realistic docking port UI. Very helpful when you start to build space stations or big interstellar crafts. Fill it up. Very important modification for anyone building SSTOs or planes in general. Fill it up allows to adjust fuel levels in hangar to check out your center of mass. Trajectories. This mod will show your trajectory in atmosphere, depending on the atmospheric drag. I bet this is your favorite mod if you are like space shuttle enthusiast. Free IVA. This mod allows you to take the first person journey through the space stations, planetary bases, or big interstellar crafts. Here are some footage from my space station with free IVA. And this is it for the main gameplay section. Nevertheless, with the next sections, I would be adding even more functional mods when necessary. Alright, it is time for the colonies. 
And big disclaimer here, I would me not be adding huge production chains that require KSP1 PhD to understand. This section introduced simple life support as a system to manage and colonies that not only can refuel your spacecraft, but also provide a renewable source for the life support. In simple terms, this is life support challenge and colonies to fulfill this set challenge. First, we need the basis for our colony building suit, and we will be adding planet site exploration technologies. It have not only rather compact modules, but also several 5 meter parts for your bigger colonies. Next is Hubtech 2. While it is more station focused park, nevertheless it provides quite handy big solar panel arrays with the sun tracking capability. Now we need to add life support. Main life support driver is TAC life support. Your carols will consume 4 resources, oxygen, water, food and electric charge. Then there are free recyclable byproducts of the life support. They are carbon dioxide, wastewater and waste. For the short emissions you can just provide enough supplies. For the long emissions you can recycle oxygen and water with 90% efficiency with extra parts. But we need something to make colonies worthwhile. TAC LS Mining. This mod adds big SRU option to convert ore into everything outside of food. Fitting directly into consumer life support resources, I feel like this is a very overpowered mod. So I do the most reasonable thing. I mod the mod. After installing TAC LS Mining, go to the game data folder, TAC LS Mining and open config file. Here I just removed sections that allow to mine pure water, oxygen and waste. I have retained module that allow to mine wastewater with waste and module to mine carbon dioxide. In this fashion, you will need to recycle these resources with your life support parts. That actually kinda makes sense. I know, I know, that's a bit more like complicated to mod the mods, but for the simplicity of use I just provide my replacement code down below. Now we have only one base to cover with our life support, and it is food. Planetside, pl Planetside exploration technologies provide greenhouse to turn waste byproducts into the food, but it is a bit inefficient, it can only sustain like 2 or 3 kerbals, and adding more greenhouses does not yield more food. You can modify the mod file, specifically you need to go to this address in the game data folder. Greenhouse is the last entry in the file. You can just increase output of food like 4 times while increasing input resources to balance things out. Also since we already can kind of mine the wastewater and convert it into the normal water, I personally prefer to remove the water output as well. Because well, it kind of makes sense, greenhouse doesn't provide water, it actually consumes the water. From the gameplay perspective, this is not entirely necessary. You need like one engineer and maybe like one scientist to run the whole colony to function and one greenhouse can totally support that. But if you want to roleplay bigger colonies or maybe even resupply food for the bigger spacecraft, you can make this adjustment. Or another school of thought for is to treat food as non-renewable resource. And you either bring enough food for the decades or constantly resupply your colonies. Alright, we are set with the life support challenge. Now let's make everything a bit more convenient and interesting. Universal Storage 2 finalized as a very handy system not only to store ordinary resources, but to store your life support supplies and converters. And it honestly just looks so dope. Heat control and system heat will add extra radiators with revamp heat system to the game. Vanilla heat system is a bit clunky and unintuitive. Building colonies or huge interstellar spacecraft is not so viable with vanilla heat system. To manage your heat system with system heat, you will put parts into independent heating loops. Also, the system heat itself provides reasonable readouts, so you can add enough radiators in the building process, not by testing everything in the field. Next, we are adding near future electrical. This mod adds capacitors with a bunch of high capacity batteries. And the cherry on top is nuclear reactors. Fission reactors use enriched uranium and have core life expectancy. Really interesting system to manage and it saves you the headache of putting like dozens of RTGs or fuel cells to provide power for like far far away from Kerbal sunlight. And the last mod in this part is Coriolis Space Systems. It is the first mod on the list not currently present on scan and it will require the manual installation. All the dependencies are already there, so you will need only to transfer benji10 underscore stowaway folder into your game data folder. This simple mod adds cable systems and command module from stowaway film. I find this mod more of a visual roleplay design and definitely I consider this more of like a visual modification, it doesn't do a real like functional things, it's more of like visual design. And consider like manual nature of this install, just use this mod only if you want to make something like spinny spinny on your like spinny spinny interstellar spacecraft or something. Alright, we have our graphics, we have our gameplay, we have our life support and colonies. 
What's next? Ha! Huh. Let's put something onto the ELO, like big colony. Hmm. Alright, let's make a heavy launch vehicle. Oh man, it have like 300 parts. That's not great. We have several mods that can reduce part count and make interplanetary transfers of something big way easier and more convenient and save you FPS. Let's go. Artemis Construction Kit, and I do not know why I'm talking like a comrade. This mod provides pre-built SLS with a bunch of customization. With this baby you can lift like 200 ton payloads into the LKO. And it's also provide easy to use fairing, big landing legs and 4-man capsule with a lander can. Cryogenic engines are already the part of this previous pack, but with this standalone mod we can add even more high SP by propellant rocket engines. Cryogenic fuel tanks add a layer of complexity to much high ASP of engines and they require electrical power to cool things off and prevent fuel evaporation. Kinda realistic feature. And you know what, you are adding all these new parts and then go to the game, start to construct something and it honestly feels overwhelming. Dozens of new parts, what they do, what, how they work, you do not really know, but it's actually quite simple with these extra engine packs. Basically you are adding two new fuel types. First one is hydrogen, which is LH2, and second is LH4, which is methane. And there is a workaround when you want to build something with new engines. You just type hydrogen in search and you can see all the LH2 engines. Or you can type methane and see all the fancy Starship grade engines. Quite simple. Next mod on the list is near future launch vehicles. I find this is like essential mod to create bigger master ships. Not only it provides huge fuel tanks, fairings, engine plates, but it also provide things like structural adapters and huge docking ports. Absolute must have to reduce your part count. And finally we have arrived to interplanetary transfers. Cryogenic engines and heavy lift parts are nice, but we need something for interplanetary driver to make our long range colonization a bit more viable. And I do not like overpowered modded nuclear engines. They are just too simple and too powerful at the same time. But near future propulsion just adds the right balance of ISP and demand. Near Future Propulsion adds uh, more of xenon gas ion engines and add both argon and lithium engines as more powerful upgrades. High ISP comes at the cost of humongous electrical consumption and this works well with the nuclear reactors that were already added with the colonies. And reactors obviously need huge heatsinks to function, so you get powerful high ISP interplanetary engines but need to use reactors and heat sinks. And as always, if you are lost in the zoo of parts, just type xenon, argon or lithium to find your required parts. Now we are in the interstellar territory. Well, if you can call it territory, it's more like a huge void of nothing. <laughs> yeah, we have our gameplay, we have our graphics, heavy launch capability, colonies to resupply our life support, what we need next. Well, we need some tools to actually make a journey. So let's start with the interstellar tools. Astrogator will help to plan your transfer windows. Very nice and simple tool, especially if you play sandbox or science game. Better time warp allows to adjust time warp settings on the go, and the ability to time warp while actually using the engines is a huge deal for Interstellar and kind of the main point of KSP2, and we can have it in KSP1, sort of. Then we have better burn time as a small addition to have like extra quality of life for something like suicide burns and landings. Now you can know when you hit the ground or re-enter atmosphere. And then we have near future construction that add quite handy trust sections for any interstellar craft. Then we can add JX to antenna to give you long range communications. And finally we are right for the big addition and this is parts from the far future technologies. Together with space dust dependency it is a huge chunk of interstellar gameplay. Interstellar engines require enormous power input and heat management. They work well with the fusion reactors from near future electrical, system heat and fusion reactors from far future tech. System heat itself allows to scoop fuels from atmospheres of gas giants and other planets. And this works well with the electrical engines from near future propulsion. You can actually finally resupply your xenon and argon gases. 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 What? I'm just guessing how it's pronounced right now. Nuclear salt water dries feels like properly balanced nuclear engines for a change and helium free fuel requires specialized harvesters that looks like something from straight off like 2009 moon film. Antimatter production feels like I'm playing satisfactory all over again and fusion reactors are a bit more complicated than simple fusion reactors. The point is that far future tech and space dust have a lot of features and they probably deserve at least 20 minutes tutorial and this video is already probably longer than like 25 minutes, I don't know. <laughs> 
Yeah. This is why I personally recommend to play my mod pack as a science playthrough. And then you can digest every new fuel type and system on a reasonable pace. And we still have one more thing to cover. Deep freeze. We can resupply our life support systems when we arrive to other star systems. But feeding dozens of space explorers is not really a viable approach to interstellar journey. With the deep freeze, we just freeze them. And now we pretty much have everything to make our journey. Only thing left is a great destination. There is a very important side note about interstellar packs. They are eating a lot of RAM. I'm running 48 gigs of RAM to edit 4K video stuff. And I kinda can get away with installing every single planet pack. I have seen KSP RAM consumption well above 20 and even 30 gigs. So if you are running more realistic system with 16 or 32 gigs of RAM, I would recommend to limit your planet packs to one or two at a time. After all, they are usually quite modular in nature. First and highly recommended planet pack is Ultra Planet Mod. This is the best roster of space destination to farm your science and test your high ASP engines. Other unorthodox pack is the Quark pack. And this is more of like inner planet expansion. And while it looks kinda easy, it's not actually so simple. It will stretch your heat generation and high ASP high trust modded engines to their limits. Basically it is like Moho capture slash landings crunk to 11. Alright, we have our Kerbal Playground, now we want to go to the Interstellar. And the first stop here is Xaldilog System. Xaldilog System is the huge planet mod pack. Yes, it is manual install, make sure that you include all the dependencies, but by this point probably you have a lot of them in your game data folder, so, so just double check your Xaldilog System zip and game data folder and just place things that are missing from the, well, game data folder. And to be honest, Xaldilog System is just like awesome! It adds several star systems that are orbiting around like huge black hole in the bare center of the whole system. And you can get there through the jewel system, through the wormhole, yeah, it's have wormholes. But you can disable it and test your metal in the interstellar void as well, so it's kinda a lot of settings there. This star system is compatible with Parallax, Spectra and there are numerous small settings. Just read the, well, read me. Like you can easily change your home planet to one in the black hole system. This is like awesome, you can just start play through there and uh, like have completely different experience. I bet this planet pack can keep me occupied for the whole year. And here's the point, I can talk about other planet packs for ages. Majority of them like kinda awesome. And, well, to be honest, maybe you have a different taste than me. For example, I really like converting my stock system into an alternative system where like Kevin is a moon of jewel, but, well, maybe it's not your cup of tea, you know? Also, I scour for mod packs that support Parallax and Spectra. Maybe you want to try something else. And you can search for planet packs in scan, just type planets or planet pack in search. And you also can scour the KSP forums. And maybe one day I will just make a follow up video for all these like interstellar space packs. Who knows? So if you like this video, give it a like and maybe slap a super sticker. Until the next time, have a nice one. See ya.